The government's already trying to limit the compensation of executives in bailed out companies, but a new bill heading to the House floor would give the Treasury Secretary a say over the pay of every employee in those firms. One of the authors of this bill is Democratic Congressman Jim Himes. He joins us from Connecticut. And uh, Congressman, I got to tell you, Dagan is one of your constituents. You better, you better be very careful how you answer these questions or you might not get her vote. Okay, uh, well, I'm happy to join the family quarrel. <laughs> <laughs> Having put the fear of God in you, or at least one voter anyway, what's, what's the deal here? A lot of Americans think the Treasury Secretary already has too much power, but now he'd be able to go even beyond the executive executive quarters and, and adjust the pay of, of other people, all the people in a company? No, look, this bill is not trying to solve problems that nobody says exist, and nobody is saying that the thousands of secretaries working on Wall Street or the junior bankers or what have you are being overpaid. What this bill is, it's the next step after the bill that was passed two weeks ago that uh, in all candor uh, was hastily brought to the Congress and was full of unintended consequences. This bill just says that Treasury gets to set up standards for performance-based compensation structures and for reasonableness that will apply to firms that are in the TARP while they are in the TARP. So I'm not going to tell you that it's the last word or perfection on sort of satisfying the tension between protecting taxpayer dollars and stabilizing the industry, but it's a big step in the right direction. It's not designed to limit every employee's compensation. Nobody's saying that that's a problem. Congressman, you worked at Goldman Sachs for more than a decade, so tell me, sir, what is excessive and reasonable? Well, you know, the good news is that it will be Treasury that will set up the guidelines around what those things are, not 435 members of Congress, many of whom don't have a lot of familiarity with the industry or with uh, the unintended consequences of things that could happen out of Congress. So again, you know, when all is said and done, when we get past the tarp, one of the things we'll be talking about is precisely that question. Uh, how do we set up compensation structures which are not only performance-based, but long-term performance-based? And that's not an interest of the United States government although right now it very much is, that's a basic interest of uh, shareholders in these companies going forward. But Congressman, you know, Americans, first of all, we're fed up to here with most bailouts, any kind of bailouts. We see money going to Chrysler, which is a private equity firm, so that a foreign company, Fiat, can come in and uh, buy a good chunk of Chrysler without putting any money down. I mean, there's so but You talk about unintended consequences. In many cases, the rich are getting richer because of our bailouts and they don't want to give the treasury secretary any more power than he already has this would give him more yeah, but that's exactly the point, right? This gives the Treasury Secretary the power to say that, no, a 15 million payout guy didn't perform last year when those 15 million dollars came from the taxpayers of the United States of America. That's not going to fly. But look what the now, Treasury Secretaries have already done, how many mistakes they've already made. Elizabeth Warren said they, they misspent $78 billion in the first tranche of TARP. I mean, these are many of the same people. Neil Kashkari is still there. Geithner was there during the Bush era. We don't want the to repeat the same mistakes. Look, let's be honest with each other about this. The reality is that no Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson or Tim Geithner, or any member of Congress or anybody at Treasury has ever seen conditions quite like this one. And so the efforts that were made, and look, I understand better than most how very, very angry the American people are about the TARP and at the notion that their taxpayer dollars need to go to bail out an industry, which frankly was pretty intimately involved in getting us to this point. But the reality is we have no choice but to stabilize the financial services market and the housing market around it. And those who say, we shouldn't be doing that, need to really rethink the notion because it is our financial services industry and the credit that it offers families and small businesses and corporations that is the lifeblood of this economy. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Did you pass? All right, Dagan, did I pass the test? Did you pass? Did you pass? <laughs> oh, she's giving you a whole. Dagan. Impartial. <laughs> she's not, say she's right. not saying yay or nay, so uh, please okay. come back. Do it again, all okay. right? Congressman Take care. Jim good Hines. talking with you. Thanks a lot, Congressman. Yeah, I appreciate bye -bye. it. The economic downturn.